Hey everyone, my name's Drew and we're here. This is going to be week number three of the TBL uh, with my partner in the Texas Education Agency in Vivid Color. Hello, hi, uh, all of you Pokemon League Battler fans. We have uh, we have a, a special episode today. <laughs> do you want to do you want to discuss why this episode is uh, special, please? Yeah, so uh, this was done live and I, I may or may not have completely just forgotten to click record. So um, we're both just going to be kind of reacting to this battle. Um, and this is a reaction video. We are Poketubers <laughs> reacting. And I promise that I wouldn't say this live, but here we are. Yeah, I'd, re I'd really rather you just didn't call it that, but I guess we're here. Uh, either way, we are both going to be watching uh, how this match played out. It's We're just going to be watching this match play out and talking about how I made all the right plays and how Root made all the wrong plays. I mean, you're and, not wrong. Uh, okay, so like, actually, so, <laughs> so, so, so I genuinely did want to address this, but, um, but we do kind of have to talk about last week, I think, a little bit, because in watching it back, because like, I, I edited the whole thing, and it was one of the most uh, difficult things for me to edit, because every time I watched it back, I just kind of had to watch myself actively choke the match away. Uh, Are you talking about the the matchup between Pokemon and Tar Heel? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The one oh, where okay. we the, the, the Delmize turn. Yeah, the one where I had to convince yeah. you to switch into Delmize, and it absolutely just threw the match away last week. Like, okay, so it's okay. No, 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 no. I get it. I'm just saying. <laughs> I get it. I get it. I'm just saying. In my head, we should be two and zero right now, and uh, it just kind of thinks that we're not. Like I like. Uh, I, I I I very strongly believe that if we had the Delmize for for that end game, then that would have made a huge difference, and especially in terms of just like being able to deal with that hacksaw in, in in the late game, um, or just not right. having anything to, to deal with the hacksaw, uh, just kind of blew the game wide open in the end. The the flip side to this is one one is literally the best starting league record I've had in Gen <laughs> eight so far. So I'm I'll take it, baby. I'm here. I don't know if that's true. I think I won my first week of WVE, but still. It's it's fine. I feel like we are victors right now because we are not O two, which is I think what I'm comfortable with right now. So. Yeah, you know, I, I I feel very similarly. But uh, this <laughs> week we will be taking on the Washu Bear Ticks, uh, which is the team of Token Minorities Jolt and Token Minorities Goldoa. Goldoa. And uh, yeah, they have a bonker scary team, right? So a lot of mons that we don't deal with that well. That, yeah, this is correct. Um, the the team they brought is up on the screen already, um, which is Terrakion, Hydreigon, Toad. What is this thing? Seismic Toad, Copperaja, Owlboy, and Toxic Fireboy. What is that thing's name? Salazzle. There you go. Oh, it's up on this. <laughs> you literally have it pulled up on Discord, too. I do. Uh, but yeah, the rest of their team was also not super like easy for us to take on. Musharna is like pseudo-problematic for everything except for for um, the goon and also Gardevoir specifically like Scarf Gardevoir looked like it ate our entire team up so well yeah no so um it was really interesting because uh they did do a lot of talking about about how they argued amongst themselves who was the better Gardevoir player and I thought Gardevoir was an absolute lock to come in in this in this matchup uh definitely more so than than the Noctowl I think we talked when we both did this uh the first time that right. that it was that a lot of this was a lot of what we would expect it except we had the Gardevoir in in that Noctowl slot and uh it just was really jarring not to see the Gardevoir here when it uh a did have a really good matchup it, it was coming from two players that apparently really like using it even though it's right. really not that great but <laughs> okay <laughs> just random shade <laughs> As for our team, obviously, uh, we'd have the Delmize, Obstagoon, Kirim, Heliolisk, Jirachi, and the Sylveon. So, a, a lot of things going on here, right? I particularly like this Delmize set. This Delmize was built to Oko a max defense, bold Seismitoad through Rindoberry 100% of the time. And still had enough bulk left over to, I think, max out at like 75, 80-ish percent from a, right. from a banded Stone Edge. Yeah, we lived uh, Bandit Stonehenge comfortably and could still, yeah, yeah. That yeah. was the, the set was, the set was actually really good. I just want to go ahead and say Root, uh, I think the last three weeks, my input has been very minimal. Root's just been team building his little heart out. And then I look at it and I'm like, let me mess up one poke. Just let me mess up one. Let me mess up one thing. <laughs> um, well, no, and, uh, I mean, yeah. 
I mean, generally speaking, those those mons that you do have in input have come in super close. Like I, like week yeah. one, I would not have brought that Delmize, and that Delmize was a uh, pretty great week one. Right, and yeah, yeah. and it's funny because uh, I generally don't like the much more st standard Delmize build, but the way that we've been using it this season. I think it's been a whole lot of fun, and yeah, I think I think the dummy sets have been good. Yeah, and yeah, and just the way that we've uh, again been using it this season gives me a whole new appreciation for dummies and like that, and like the ways that it can be used. Uh, it's just been a whole lot of fun for me. I also want to point out um, the dummy set is really good. Um, the Heliolus set is just like specs. It's a Scarfrachi, pretty typical. Like all the sets, I think even you could argue that the Kirim set, it's just like Expert Belt over Life Orb, kind of typical. Mm -hmm. This uh, Choice Scarf Reckless Obstacute, though, it like on paper is a monster. It, its damage calcs are through the roof. So I just want like on top of the Delmys, I think that's like the Heat set uh, that we, we're bringing this week. Yeah, so in, in my mind, there was really no reason to not ever want to click just Scarfed uh, Double Edge. There was no right. real need for for dark coverage over the just standard Double Edge set. And it just felt really strong in this situation. Obviously, the, the tracking is always going to be an issue. Obviously, right. whatever they choose to Scarf is going to be an issue. Obviously, they, they could have a lot of just general defensive bulk, but just the damage output out of scarfed stab reckless double edge felt really tempting to me it felt like a really solid matchup here right right so this is, this is what we're bringing these are these are the i mean we didn't break down evs or anything these are the sets <laughs> uh so whenever you're ready let's just let's let's react to this video we're gonna be reacting specifically to roots facial reactions yeah exactly because his video is already like his camera is already on the, the gameplay and then uh, my camera will be live, so it'll, it won't make much sense, but it'll be fun. Okay, so here we are into this match, and I believe we just wanted to lead off with Delmize, kind of expecting a, a couple of things, but more or less expecting kind of a lead Toad, which is kind of what this Delmize was built to do, right? If, if this Delma, if this Toad feels comfortable staying in because it has Rindo Barian, because it's, it's max defense bold, it's meant to just like take the rocks and then completely punish it back. Right, and we also, I think, uh, like on top of Toad, uh, rocks like Terrakion made sense here, which we probably just force out either way because the rock sets are all just like uh, Sash. Yeah, exactly, and 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 Delmize is just so strong in this matchup that being able to deal damage to whatever comes in uh, felt strong to me. And exactly, look at the damn, look at the chip on Kaparaja. That's insane coming from like you know, a resistive hit. I, I don't know. I just think like, so they switched the, the seismic toad out into cop and the damage that we output from this thing, even though it's resisted is absurd to me. And it's to a cop Raja that has like a million HP stat. And right. And we got to see their team after the match. And this is a very defensive cop Raja. So, so even just now knowing how, how defensive this cop Raja was, that is a lot of damage to be doing again, as a resisted, as a resisted hit to a very defensive cop Raja. But, but regardless, we want to take this opportunity to go into Jirachi. I'm sure it was your idea. I, I would have never signed whoa, off on it. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I think this is right. <laughs> I think we were predicting just like an Iron Head or a Heavy Slam. Yeah, no, I'm sure. But no, it's just the double into the owl. I just want to real quick take an aside to say, after we played this battle, I went downstairs and talked to Emily, and I was like, people are playing Knocked Owl in Draft Leagues now. <laughs> she doesn't know what that means, but she was like, that's nice. <laughs> yeah, no, um... <laughs> You know, I think the Noctowl threw us both off. No, ne neither of us knew what to really do here, and and of course, n neither of us were really respecting this Noctowl much. We just right. I, we just decided to scarf ourselves in a cell the rock because we were like, "What is this Noctowl gonna do to us?" Exactly. I'm pretty sure I was like adamant for Ironhead because I remember saying something along the lines of, "When I use Jirachi, we flinch." <laughs> oh yeah, no, I think. I think I was adamant about you turning, but you but you were adamant about yeah. about stealth rocking here. You convinced me to stealth rock, which was absolutely the correct play here. But uh, I hundred percent just 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 wanted to get out of here because like I assumed we just scared this thing out. I assumed this would have done nothing, but it, it's very clear now that this thing is specs tinted yeah. lens hurricane. That is specs damage. Yeah, that is 100%. that is insane damage. That is bananas damage. And now we just don't have a fantastic switch. I'm pretty sure we go out into Sylvie on here because it's like just our sp spadef thing, right? I'm like pretty sure that's the play we make. I actually think that I convinced you in, in this moment to, 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 to go into Kieran because um 
my thinking here was that Kiram could take any single hit, and now and now that we know 100% that this thing is specs because of that uh, Jirachi damage, we can right. we can just threaten it back with just whatever hit we want to hit it with. So see, and 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 because um, Kiram here doesn't seem as valuable as a lot of other mons that we could go into here, so. Um, Kiram felt like a little bit more of, uh, of an expendable member that we could kind of mess around with and deal uh, damage to, to, the, to the rest of the team. Um, but they pulled double as well. Like, they clearly expected us to do something here. Goes into the Cop right. which is obviously the right play on whatever the heck we, we were trying to do here. If we were just trying to like iron head flinch. Yeah, yeah. We ran a bunch of calcs in this moment. I think I, I think we might be running calcs here. I think that's what my face is doing right now. But yeah. um but you know, um every indication was that against most Compraja sets, extra belt uh earth power should be able to KO from the from this range. It looked like it was gonna be a ro roll no matter what happened, but we just barely miss out on it. And it turns out that this is a very, very specially defensive uh Compraja. Right. But the fact that it is so specially defensive means that it can't KO us back with Iron Head. Well, but the pro see if they had heavy slam here, we died. Was like I think zero investment heavy slam killed, which was the calcs we were running. Uh, but the risk seemed worth the reward. I don't think, I don't think Godoa and Jolt yet appreciate just the way that they've been building it. That heavy metal iron uh, uh, heavy slam just does a million damage to everything. Regardless, right. um, it, it lets us take this thing out with a simple ice beam and. We kind of have something's going here. I, I, I believe we get the first KO, so we're starting to get make some things happen here. But um, the team's starting to get slightly weakened. Noctowl is still vaguely uh, threatening, which is upsetting to both of us at this point. Also, I think Salazzle just eats our entire team if Jirachi oh, for goes sure. down because it's faster. Yeah, I was about to say, I'm pretty sure that's a switch in here, if I'm remembering correctly. And, and I'm so, pretty positive this was just a complete sack on our end because I don't think there was any use in trying to take damage from a Sela, from a Salazzle in this moment. Um, do we do we sack or do we go? I don't remember what we do in this play. I don't either. But uh, regardless, anything's going to take like a million damage from the Salazzle. So I don't think any right. switch is going to be super profitable. I believe this is a sack. Um, I'd be surprised if it wasn't, but. Uh, I think our best bet here would be Sylveon to take a hit, but and then reasonably yeah, like if the Sylveon has any, uh, if the Salazzle has any coverage, then it's never going to be super great for us. So yeah, it does look like we do sack. Um, they know that we're not scarfed or anything because we did switch up moves and all that nonsense. So this was really kind of a no drawback play, but it does give us the initiative to get things going with our so obstacle that it's uh, black sludge salazzle which was kind of a big deal because if the thing was scarfed it outsped our entire team and if it was specs then we had to like respect that kind of damage too but it was a black sludge so we can kind of predict like the sub toxic set or the toxic protect set exactly so. right and yeah, the entire match we were trying to suss out whatever their scarfer was because we had to play this obstacle and super duper carefully uh, in in order to not get just destroyed by, by whatever they choose to scarf so uh, obviously our obstacle is scarfed and it can outspeed most things, but it's not going to outspeed a lot of their scarfers. So and we had to be super duper careful about it because obstacle is going to be our main source of offensive pressure in this matchup. Right, just like putting out damage, like getting the numbers. The cal like we said, the calcs with the thing with double edge were insane. And I'm pretty sure I'm predicting the future here a little bit. I'm pretty sure they out into Terrakion here, probably predicting like a knock or something. Um, yeah, no, this is. This was the first time our obstacle hit the field, and I, I do have to mention that uh, Josh bred this team for us th this week, and I'm very <laughs> not, uh, I'm very not for this shiny obstacle. I think it looks atrociously bad, but oh, I think it looks bad in the best way. I think Look it looks at that damage. <laughs> it, th exactly. So that is a, a resisted hit, which um, which does a kind of re reveal that this is a more offensive. Uh, Terrakion, but that was to, to, to be expected. I think the biggest thing that, that we're fearing is if it's a Scarf Terrakion. Um, but just the fact that we did that much damage on a resisted hit just got us so excited in in, in the moment. Um, that that reaction that, that Josh just had, he had like 10 times over a, uh, in the actual match. It was so much, it's so much damage. It's so much damage for being resisted. I mean, okay. But the big takeaway was that uh, it did a little bit more than a third, so they so they right. can't really switch in it. You you made this point immediately, but they can't do that again. They can't bring a track right. again on the obstacle unless on the uh, unless the track count scarfed, obviously, which we still have to figure out right. um, what their scarf is. But 
we do just bring in the the Delmize, and again, the the, the Delmize is pretty d defensive here, but... And that's zero damage! I mean, it's a lot of damage, right, from a Stone Age, but we have Synthesis, so we can just heal it off. Well, yeah, so 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 at this point, we are operating on, under the assumption that this is a Scarf, because that Stone Age pretty much confirms that it is not a boosting item. Yeah, 100% not banded, it's not, we're not seeing Life Orb recoil. Right. Um, yeah. So. So, 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 so this is why we feel completely free to just click Synthesis, because if he wants to stay in, he's he's not really too KOing us, especially with that first damage draw. I believe it has a chance to KO us, but based on that first damage draw, I don't think there's a chance anymore for that to happen. Right. Um, and and he's gonna miss eventually. He has to fear just because <laughs> it's stone. Yeah, yeah. He he, 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 has, he also has to fear. Um, he also has to fear. Uh, just us hitting him back with a really strong power web. So we're in an okay position here. In comes an Octal. Okay, so this is the play where we go out and just, like, we sent this up here, and then I'm pretty sure we just got into Sylveon here, because Sylveon's taking hits from this thing, right? I'm pretty sure that's the play we make. Well, well, yes, yeah, so Sylveon, I'm not entirely sure what we built this Sylveon specifically yeah, for. Yeah. It might have been just, like, to take any, like, Gardevoir hits, or, or any Hydreigon right. hits, re it was realistically. A, but, yeah, it was, like, Hydreigon and Gardevoir hits. Like, we, I think the yeah. Sylveon was specifically EV'd to take Flash Cannons, like, and not yeah. to hit Kano. Yeah. yeah, but the point is that this Sylveon is pretty much as specially defensive as a Sylveon can be. It has leftovers. It's meant to take every hit and just, like, deal damage back because Pixelate Hyper Voice is just, like, inherently pretty strong. Um, but this here's is where here's you where, talked where, me into a double switch. Yeah, no, here's where we start to get, like, a little bit frisky because they have been double switching a, a decent amount this, this entire match. We don't... At, at the very least, I convince you that, uh, to, to the fact that I don't think that they would want to stay in here to just, like, let the Sylveon take more damage and just, like, let their Noctowl right. take damage when the Noctowl has such a good matchup. And even if they do take us out, it just invites the, the Ops to. And so everything in my head was just uh, aligning towards they're going to want to pull a double here. And so we bring in the Ops again, and they don't pull a double. They, they go. Pull a double. <laughs> they go for the Hurricane. And it misses. Oh, yeah, Hurricane <laughs> also has atrocious accuracy. So. Now, now here's the thing, right? Here's the thing, right? Um, I did the calc, and I believe, if if I remember correctly, Hurricane to Opsigoon, their specific uh, Noctowl to our specific Opsigoon, maxes out at like 313 points of damage. We always take a one single Hurricane, but we burn ourselves out to to the right. to, to the recoil. So so recoil, so so, so Opsigoon gets one super strong hit off. Uh, if that hurricane lands and then Opsigoon's done for the rest of the match, and then we have to like figure something else out. Um, but yeah, I mean it sucks that they missed, but but you know what doesn't suck? <laughs> Double edges accuracy. <laughs> that too. Um, uh, and I and I I believe I I started to hedge a little bit, but but you convinced me because you calked out even if this thing was was max HP. Right. Uh, yeah. Uh, we always double edge should always kill, especially we always kill. especially yes. from this range. But I, but I, I believe even if it was from Max, it, it was like some sort of a roll or something. They begin the the size method, which is incredibly scary, because if this doesn't two hit, then we're in a lot of trouble. But, but it, it does so much damage. It's too high. It's yeah. too strong. So so I actually believe that this was a specially defensive ass assault vested um size method. No, I think it was uh, it was the berry for ice. It was ice berry, right? It was Yachi for freeze dry. I'm pretty sure. No, I'm pretty sure it was a salt vest. What? Um, Maybe. You're, you're probably right. But <laughs> because assault vested, they built an assault vested seismic toad that was able to cover, I believe, even healerless grass knot from full after rocks. Mm. So you're right, you're right. I remember that discussion now. Yeah. So. So they wanted to, to be able to cover those things, which forced them into a very specially defensive um, size method, which allowed for this two hit. And now Obstagoon is has two KOs, right? And it's because size method. Okay, you have you guys have no idea just how scary size method was was for us to build around because we can deal with the size method, but it takes a lot of resources for for us to do that. Correct. Yeah. And just and just to have it go down, I don't want to say easily, but that like. Simply was right, bananas with to like, us. Yeah, with, without it ever actually getting to take an action. Like yeah, it let like it entered the battlefield turn one, didn't do anything, switched out, and then it just entered the battlefield just to die in two hits. Like that was insane. At this point, we're feeling pretty up. Like we've dodged a hurricane. Yeah, we've no. Playing two lives. <laughs>
Uh, what are we on to here? Oh, the the Delmise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We just can never die. Yeah. All right. Okay. Cool. Yeah. No. Like I said, um, it it, it does look like a, a roll for non-boosting item like Stone Edge to two ko to two ko's, but uh, it's a pretty ag aggressive roll. But then they go for the sword dance, right? And they, yeah, they everything's the looking dance. pretty scary. But I ran the calc, and yeah. it's like they they have to get the absolute max roll or a crit to kill. Okay. So, so uh, okay. So here's the thing. Here, here's the thing, right? Um. <laughs> oh, we talked over the calcs a after the match, and and. I believe it was like a 12% chance for 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 plus 2 to KO here. Oh. Okay. And 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 there were two damage rolls. There were two actual damage numbers that that KO'd us. And 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 that Stone Edge actually did the highest amount of damage that could possibly have done have been done without KOing us. Jeez. So, that was 4 HP. We took that on 4 HP. And Delmize is so good and it's, I, it's just been really good for us this season yeah but i so often get stressed out by all of these damage rolls that come down to like under 10 percent because we had a lot right. of those in, in in week one and they stress me the fuck out yeah i mean they're not it's not fun but i just like i don't remember their exact set but i remember whatever i was calcing uh because we knew they weren't banded we knew they weren't life orbs so mm -hmm. I, th I think i was just calcing like no item like assuming some type of berry yeah uh whenever i calc like it it, it doesn't matter but they were lumberry just for <laughs> Oh, okay, right, right, right. Whatever I remember calcing, I, I remember saying, like, as long as, you know, it's not insert, like, whatever, like, fighting plate or something, mm -hmm. like, fighting rock plate or something, like, we always live plus two. Or not always, but it's, like, a, a roll that's super in our favor, I think is what I remember. Yeah, no, but it was still uh, completely scary 100% of the time. Yeah, 100%. So this, uh, they just revealed physical Hydreigon, Yes. Right? They just crunched, yeah, so... Now we have to worry about Iron Tails and Crunches and things of that sort. And we know our Sylveon probably isn't the you know the goal here anymore because we probably just died to an Iron Tail. Right. And and both of our first reactions were that this thing can potentially be, be Scarfed because it, they still don't have a Scarf Regret. So it might just default it to, to, to a physical Hydreigon Scarf. But but you you brought up and 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 we were both starting to to just like operate under the assumption that this thing was probably dragon dance instead right because with the physical set and a dragon dance like with the dragon dance boost up this thing looks like it would wreak havoc on our entire team right here we go into yeah so we kind of go into Jirachi here to like test the waters if this thing is scarf because if they're scarf they just kill the rachi and then we know if they're not Scarf, they kind of have to respect that we're Scarfed and, you know, play from that. So, they switch out, uh, which I don't think it 100% confirms that they're not Scarfed, right? Because mm -hmm. uh, Scarf Rachi is still at speeds, but we're, like, more in that territory, at least. Yeah, no, this Jirachi was, was Scarfed specifically to deal with a Scarfed Hydreigon, or a plus one Hydreigon, obviously, but... Uh, it with Dragon Dance. So, so we felt re reasonably safe j j just going for a U-turn here, and, and like... He, even, even if the Hydreigon did say in that we could always U turn into Sylveon, Zach Sylveon, and then U turn again, and we would have been fine. But they go right. into Salazzle, and because we have the momentum, it's obstacle time again. And you know, we're just clicking double edge here. I ran the calc. This kills every form of Salazzle. Like, I think the min roll on like no bolt Salazzle was something like 180%, and on max bulk, it was like 110 so like 100%, we're just gonna obliterate this thing, and the only two things left in the back are the Hydreigon and the Knockout, both of which cannot switch into this double edge. The only thing we're really concerned about right now is the Hydreigon being scarfed, because then it would outspeed our uh, our Goon Boy here. Yeah, no, and and here we do a lot of thinking. Like you can watch my face, and we do a lot of thinking here about what the heck to do yeah. here. But um, but. You, but you, you were always saying that like if the Hydreigon comes in, we stay in. You were assuming that it was that it was um, Dragon Dance, and that if we just let it go for Dragon Dance, then then we put ourselves in a slightly worse position. I was saying that I say we just go go to Sylveon every time, or um, because or no, maybe maybe I was saying go to Jirachi every time because if it does Dragon Dance, then we can U-turn into Sylveon, and then and then we can do right. the U-turn again, and then Obstagoon's always there in. In the end game to 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 kill the the knock towel. and I think we, we, we were in the situation where we we're both like basically say, saying the same thing, but we we had to like a, a, agree on like how we want to play this to like try to ensure the win as much as possible. Right. And and yeah, you were arguing that that we should stay in because even if this thing is scarfed, then 
then uh Jirachi still wins this in in the end game uh, uh just like by by you turning this in this hydragon and and iron heading the Noctowl. the Noctowl, yeah. yeah so we asked them after the match and it turned out they were going for a dragon dance here the calcs i was running um it looked like double edge from this range was like maybe a slight roll like a slight roll in our favor but a roll like because Hydreigon has, like, a reasonable amount of bolt. Yeah, no, so for I, sure. So my whole point was, like, just hit it, and then the Rachi will always be able to kill it with U-Turn. Yeah. Is, like, my thought process. If they go for a Dragon Dance, and then if they did go for a Dragon, or, like, if they were Scarf, then we could still just, like, U-Turn, and then, like you said, Iron Head everything out was the, the like, ideal end game. So the we, we kill the last two things with Double Edge, and then, sadly, the Goon goes down to his Unfortunately. own recoil. Yeah, super unfort. But... Uh, we is that a three zero win? What all did we have left? I thought it was a two zero after the goon went down. There's a three zero. Yeah, uh, we had the Jirachi. Oh, the Sylveon was still up because the Sylveon only only took one hit and, and switched out. No, you know what it is? The Heliolisk never hit the field. Oh yeah, the Heliolisk just never touched the field. Okay, that makes sense. Gotcha. So yeah, no, um, because because we we were talking about this after the match, and and you even told me that like you thought that it was a two zero win. But we both just completely forgot that the Heliolisk, Heliolisk existed because it just never had to touch the field. Yeah, the Heliolisk also helped win the game there, in theory. <laughs> like, I didn't even... I think when we were playing the game, I just forgot it was even a Pokemon. <laughs> we, know, it, like, we know, it was also funny because... It was also funny because in the moment, you were, like, screaming so much about how how getting the Seismitoad down in that moment opened the door up for a Heliolisk that just kind of spikes Vol Switch in and right. out. And by the, by the by the time the match was over, Obstagoon just, like, did everything, and you, you forgot it existed. Right, yeah, 100%. So... Uh, Obstagoon picked up what four kills? Yeah, picked up four kills. Right? Yeah, no, that was a four Obstagoon. KO game. Yeah, like I said, like before we started doing this, like the Obstagoon <laughs> set was heat. It, it was absolute fire. Uh, I would have never, like, I would have never put two and two together. I mean, it's obvious, right? Just like reckless double edge, but I just, I've only seen people use it uh, in league play so far, at least. Like the matches I've watched, I've only seen people use it with like flame orb. So. That's like my, you know, my default thought is like, oh, Obstagoon does a million damage with Flame Orb. But it turns out this Reckless Double Edge set was also just super fire. Um, but yeah, that was that was the game. It was also, it was fun. It was fun. I mean, we dodged a hurricane, so. Yeah, no, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no again, it, it was unfortunate, but I would like to think that if Hulu Lewis had hit the field, it would have yeah, would have done something fun. Put in work. Yeah. But you know, I think I, uh, the Spikes heal as Kuiper voice probably also could have like shirt up the end. Yeah, yeah. Us too. So. Also, I was gonna say, if I remember correctly, uh, Obstagoon also has an, uh, another super dope ability, and I, I'm, I'm just looking it up in real time. It also has Defiance, so that can be something else that we do. I'm, I'm not sure in what situation yeah. we're gonna use it yet, but uh, I didn't I even realize it had Defiance to be honest with you. But, but I would like to think over over the course of the season we will we will use Defiant Obstagoon at some point. I. Again, I had I just didn't know it had that. That's cool. Yeah, that's cool. I mean, just like find someone with an intimidate team. <laughs> that's what I'm hoping. I um, Ob Obstagoon has completely surpassed my expectations. I think um, I think a, a lot of mods on, on the team have been so much more fun to use than I would have expected. Again, I can't really praise Delmize enough. I think Delmize has been so much just fun over this season, and uh, it's making the Jirachi more bearable. Right. I love Jirachi. I hate this. I hate that I said right. Just like out of like a snap reaction. I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, Jirachi is fantastic. It hasn't got to, we haven't got to flinch a bunch of things yet. But when we do, I promise you, it'll be, it'll be worth it. Or random ice punch freezes or I don't know. Maybe we can go for an ancient power boost. Who knows? It's the possibilities are endless. I don't even know if it gets ancient power, but I'm thinking it does. <laughs> This is a good week. I think we we played a, a good game. The only the only thing that I think we could have like it could have hurt us would have been like switching into the knocked out with the goon. Other than that, I think every switch, like every choice we made throughout this match, I think was like pretty on point. So I'm I'm proud of this one. I think this one is a it's a good win. It's a clean win. Um, and again, like these sets are really good. Did Kiram? Yeah, Kiram got a kill too. Kiram killed the cop. Yeah, yeah. So cool. Just again, super fun because every time we got to just bring in Scarf Office Goon and just realizing that it did a million damage and that Scarf, it just outsped their entire team. It was just so much fun to just click a button. It was so much fun. Yeah. I loved it. It was good. It was good. It was a good game to Jolt and Godella. 
uh, their link will be in the description <laughs> somewhere, I'm sure. Their links, whoever's channel this goes up on. But yeah, uh, good games, guys. Sorry about the miss, but also not sorry about the miss. <laughs> you know, this is, this is how leagues go. It's how battles go. I've, uh, this is the best I've been in a league in a while. We're two and one. See, that's, we might as well have already won the entire league from my standpoint because I'm trash in Gen 8. <laughs> Uh, uh, absolutely. Uh, but with that, thank, <laughs> thank you guys so much for watching. We'll be back really, really soon with uh, more weeks of the NCP Nimbus, with more weeks of the TPL, with more weeks of the APA Academy. But yeah, again, thank you guys so much for watching. I'll be once again out.